Hi guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. As promised, I finally am bringing you guys my full brand overview and review of Odin's Eye Cosmetics. So if you'd like to see my thoughts on every single product that this brand has to offer, a tutorial on this look, lip swatches, arm swatches, everything you need to know, then just keep watching. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I know a lot of you were excited about this video because I've gotten a lot of questions about Odin's Eye as I have been wearing them in my videos, on my Instagram, on my stories, all of that good stuff. I spent a lot of time testing these products out. Now this video is very kindly sponsored from Odin's Eyes Cosmetics and the reason that we have this little partnership going is because they saw I was actually using their products. So they reached out about partnering with me of course. So all of these items were were gifted to me from the brand. They did also sponsor last week's video where I did a three looks one palette video and then of course this week's video. Honestly they are such an awesome company. They've given me full creative control to do whatever I want, say whatever I want, and that my friends is what you look for in a good company. <laughs> After this video if you are interested in purchasing anything from this brand I do have a discount code for you guys. It is Morgan Turner. You will receive 10% off at checkout. It is an affiliated code meaning I do you earn a small commission from it so don't feel obligated to use it but you save money I make some money win-win if you aren't familiar with the brand they are a Swedish indie brand so you guys know I've been loving discovering indie brands because truly it is just so refreshing to see new ideas new color stories and amazing formulas so this is definitely a brand I was very excited to try out they are based in Sweden and their brand is based off of Nordic mythology which is really cool lots of fairy ethereal oh, such a good aesthetic you guys everything from the packaging you will see in a second in their collection they have three eyeshadow palettes a highlighter palette, six different blushes and two different formulas, a cream lip stain and a matte lip stain. As far as the price range of Odin's Eye goes, I would say they're in that little in-between area between a drugstore and high-end. So they are more on the affordable price, but I promise you that little extra money does show in the quality and just the packaging and the details of this brand. I'm excited to get into each of these. So we're gonna start off with what I know you guys are most excited about, which are the eyeshadow palettes. So I'm I'm going to show you all three. Like I said, over the past few weeks, I've definitely been testing these thoroughly. These have definitely been my most worn. So we're going to start off with the Friha Diva palette. And I seriously apologize if I mispronounce anything. I'm not Swedish. I don't know. But this is the Friha Diva palette. It is $29. And as you can see, it's more apricot -y kind of themed. And I mean, this is the first item that you can see how detailed the packaging is. Everything from the font to the little flowers she's wearing. Just Oh, fairies. Guys, growing up, I had a fairy-themed room. I had fairies painted all over my wall, so <laughs> on brand. So in this one, you are getting 16 shades, and I've created some very pretty looks with this one. I would say of all of the palettes that I have from here, this one is probably my least favorite, but it is still very good. The reason being, it is so warm. The one thing about this palette is the colors pull very, very warm, so you can tell by opening it clearly it's a warm palette, but then they actually pull even warmer on the eyes. So if you don't like warm shadows that much, there are other options for you in the brand. This one isn't it, but all my warm tone lovers, beautiful. My absolute favorite shade is right here. It is so buttery, creamy, wet. It's this lighter pink gold color. Again, it pulls more orangey, peachy on the eye, but so buttery smooth. For the most part, everything works really great in this palette. The mattes blend out very nice. Uh, the shimmers are extremely creamy, and they started experimenting with some very pretty lid topper style shades. And what I think is really special about this brand, and I'll talk about this, as I continue into the palettes, but they have these duochrome lid topper shades that are phenomenal. So overall, this is a good palette, but I'm definitely excited to share with you the other two. So we're going to move on to the Alba eyeshadow palette. So this one is a bigger one, as you can see, very pretty, small detailed fairy prints on here. And this is a 16 shade eyeshadow palette. You have smaller pans in here. This one is $31. So the color scheme in here is mostly warm pinks, but you also have a bright color, which is 
brightening this whole color scheme. So if you are curious about this palette, again, I have a three looks, one palette video that I posted last week, and that video truly shows you how versatile this palette is. I will say what I think this palette does lack is depth. So I personally cannot speak on how this would work on somebody with a deeper complexion than myself. It works for me. I don't mind that this palette doesn't have too much depth, but I did notice kind of wishing sometimes that I had a little bit of deeper shades to dig into. But for the most part, the quality is beautiful and you really do see how much versatility this palette has when you watch my tutorial video because I did three completely different looks. The yellows in here are amazing and a lot of times you can tell the quality of a brand based on their yellow and it builds beautifully. It doesn't blend away. And this one, they really experimented with all of these shimmers and duochrome shades and they just are so beautiful. They definitely take the eye look up to the next level with all of the dimension that they have. I don't know if this one is my favorite one because the next one I'm about to show you is also super good but I think if you're looking to pick up one palette from the brand this is a great way to go because of the variety that you get in here and the shimmers again in here are what stand out so if you're a shimmer girl go with this one because you have a lot of different varieties you have some really smooth regular shimmer shades you have some lid topper shades you have some duochrome shades just a whole variety and to amp them up use a glitter glue okay and then now let's go into the eyeshadow palette that I'm wearing today. As much as I love the Alba because of all of the options, I do think this one's probably going to be my most used. This is the sole main eyeshadow palette. It also probably has my favorite packaging out of all of them. So this is a 12 color eyeshadow palette. There's six mattes, three shimmers, and three glitter colors. It's what I'm wearing today. You guys. I think this one is my favorite just because I feel like the color story in here is something that I personally feel very comfortable with. Of course my eye gets drawn right here to this lilac shade and it's a very good quality lilac shade. It is buildable and again a lot of times with this type of shade you can find that it'll blend away the more you kind of blend over it. I don't find that. I find it actually just builds on itself and it blends beautifully. And this is the showstopper here and it really makes this palette unique. But I didn't use this shade today. Let me do a quick tutorial for you guys. So I started off with this shade right here where I use that just to lighten up and highlight the brow bone The next shade that I went into is this mustardy orange shade and I applied that focusing on the inner and outer corners And then also meeting it in the middle to blend it up since this was also working as our Transition color to deepen everything up. I use this deep dark chocolate brown very impressed with this. It's very pigmented. It added a lot of depth to my eye and I'm so happy that the shade is in here. It's very good quality and it really added what I wanted to the look. In the center of the lid, using my finger, I took this gorgeous green glittery shade. And you guys, I have to be honest, this color is definitely comparable to the Pat McGrath eyeshadow special formula. This one in particular is my favorite shade out of the entire collection. I would love to see more shadows that are more reminiscent of this formula because this one seems a little bit extra smooth and pigmented compared to the other kind of glitter formulas. I need more of these. It's duochrome and I put that all over the lid and as you can see it is just incredible. You know I'm just going to let my eyes do the talking for this shade so the best shade I also use it to fill in the center of my lower lash line and then finally with a small brush I use this really pretty glittery gold shade as my inner corner color. It is the same formula as the green but you guys there's something. This is the inner corner head but there is something about that green that makes this whole palette worth purchasing. So those are the eyeshadow palettes. I definitely give them my stamp of approval. Indie brands do shadows best, you guys. I think the mattes are very blendable. The shimmer shades are very gorgeous. So that's the eyeshadow palettes. Those are the very exciting parts of the brand. So let's talk blushes. So they have six in their line all together, two different formulas. One is the flower blusher and the other one is the fruit blusher. So the flower blushers are going to come in slightly more purpley packed and the fruit blushers are in a little bit more peachy packaging. The difference is that the flower blushers, they have a little bit of a sheen to them. And if you look at the flower blushers, they have a little bit more of a sheen to them, whereas in the fruit blushers, they are more matte. Now I will say the flower blushers 
because even though they're supposed to have more of a glowy finish, I find that it really doesn't show up too much on the cheek. I do see that little bit extra of a glow, but it's not extremely noticeable. The flower blusher shades also seem to be a little bit deeper. So if you like a lighter, brighter cheek color, the fruit blushers are kind of going to be those lighter pinky peachy shades. Whereas the flower blushers, they're all kind of deep, very medium skin tone friendly. Again, can't speak for deeper complexions, but these run a lot darker than the fruit blushers, which you can see are a little bit lighter. So I do actually think they have quite a good range of blushes for different skin tones. Right now, I am currently wearing Little Jasmine on my cheek. I find this one to be the most universal, neutrally kind of blush, but if you're like me and you like those bright pink light colors, Ripe Papaya is a really good one. Deeper complexions, Sweet Tulip is going to be nice for you. And if you like more mauve cooler tone blushes, Sweet Peach is the way to go. I really feel like their blush names don't actually match up with what they look like. Now, formulation-wise, my suggestion would be for the best and most even application to use a looser brush. These do pack quite a punch of pigmentation, so if you use a denser brush, you're going to get a lot of color at once. And they're not hard to blend out, but you do have to put a little bit of extra work in if you put too much color on at once. So to apply today, I use the Sonia G Face Pro brush where there's really soft bristles so it makes it very easy to just have a really light application. If you like a very nice soft natural blush you're gonna have to use a really soft hand with these. If you like a little bit more of a brighter blush like myself this does deposit the perfect amount of pigmentation but still err on the lighter side to start off and then you can definitely build these up. So if you like a nice bright blush, I think you will like these. These run $13 each and they are very pretty. I have been enjoying the color range that they have here. So next we have highlighter. You can see that is what is giving me glow today. So this is the Soul Main highlighter palette. So it's the same packaging as that Soul Main eyeshadow palette and except in here you are getting a quad of highlighters and these are very beautiful, you guys. They are very glowy on this skin. In, but they are also very buildable. So the shades in here, you're getting a little bit more of a brighter gold shade. You have this blue shift, which is very pretty and ethereal. I don't love these blue highlighters on me because I feel like sometimes I look like I have frostbite. But if you're into those cool, colorful highlighters, this one's awesome. We have more of a peachy pink highlighter, which I use today as my base color to blend into my blush for something more natural. And then you have this slightly green gold highlighter here. It's very, very bright. I use this right at the top of my cheeks just to give me that extra beam. So I do enjoy these highlighters. This is $32. I do find that you do have to spend a little bit of time blending them into the skin to give you that really natural glow from within, but she glowy. And once it's worked in, it's a really beautiful formula and it, you get a really cool array of colors here that allow you to do a lot with either natural looks and not natural looks if you like those colorful highlighters. So I have been enjoying this. It's a little bit more of a hard press, which I prefer so that you don't get too much color on at once and it's a buildable formula which I much prefer. And I just really think the glow is very pretty so this one is very nice. And now let's get into the lip formulas. So the packaging of these are nice and big and I love it. So the ones that have these kind of opaque millennial pink coverings are going to be the Alva cream lip stains and then the matte lip stains as you can see you can kind of get the color here. The bottom names I feel like these don't really reflect what the actual color looks like. So I do have some real life swatches at the end of this video for you to see the true color. So we'll start off with the cream lip stains. Both of these are going to retail for $15. The cream lip stains, I would say, are like a very pigmented gloss or even just like a creamy liquid lipstick. I do like these. I think that the colors in here are very, very bright. I would like to see some more neutral toned colors added to this line and you'll see in the swatches that they pack a lot of color. The most wearable color is Little Jasmine. This one is a great everyday keep in your purse kind of lip color. And these all 
have a very soft, sweet scent. I can't quite put a finger on what it smells like, but it smells really good. I think what makes this formula stand out is actually how long wearing they are. So they give you a lot of pigmentation and they don't slip and slide everywhere that you would suspect a gloss would. Now, I, I would recommend maybe using a lip liner if you're actually wearing it out for a long time, but these have pretty good lasting power based on the cream consistency that they are. If you just want a little bit of gloss to your lips, you can apply a thin layer, though you can risk sometimes it looking a little splotchy but if you put on a thick layer for that full opacity it is beautiful very comfortable on the lips a tad bit sticky but sticky enough to where you know it is going to last on your lips but not uncomfortable so my favorite color in here is definitely little jasmine I also find lady camellia even though it is a bit of a brighter color it actually is more wearable in my sort of tone so these are my two favorite colors in the cream formula they're very nice but and I'm surprised by this I didn't think this would be the case I think I prefer their matte lip stain formula. I don't think I have a product like this in my collection. So I kind of look at these as more of lip blurs. If I apply them as a actual liquid lipstick with a thick layer, it can look a little bit splotchy and feel a little bit uncomfortable. But these I have been wearing and just blotting them on my lips and it's beautiful. The color I'm currently wearing is Ripe Papaya and I definitely recommend this color. I feel like this is one of the few colors that have more of a neutral mustardy undertone whereas the rest of them have a lot of brightness to them. This one is definitely the most unique of all the colors in this line. These matte colors I also do feel like as a whole the colors are a little bit more wearable. They're not quite as bright. And I think that has to do with just having less product on your lips. So the way that I like to apply these is just put a little bit in the center of my lips and then use my finger to work it out and you get this really pretty soft blur look. And and these last forever. I do find that the darker shades like dry dates and red apple, these ones will stain your lips. They are called lip stains, but after a while, like they leave your lips looking quite dark and cherry like. But you guys, these are your answer to wearing masks. I'm not a big fan of wearing makeup underneath my mask, but when I have had to, just because I already had it on, I don't find that these really transfer onto my mask at all. And you guys, literally, they don't budge once they set down. Even though they're more blurred like, you still get a lot of color. You get the essence of the color that this has on your lips and it's just so comfortable. You don't even feel like you have anything on and they don't move. So I think just given the times that we are in, everybody's wearing a mask, these are really awesome for those. So these have been my go-to lips if I had to wear makeup underneath the mask. So that is it, you guys. I have covered everything in detail in this line. So I'm gonna take you to the live swatches, the lip swatches, Watches, all of that and I'll be back to share with you my favorite products.
I hope you guys found this video helpful. I just want to share with you some of my favorite products that I would recommend to you guys if you are looking into purchasing from this brand for the first time. So as far as eyeshadow palettes, you can't go wrong with either the Soul Main or the Alva palette, depending on whatever speaks to your heart. For me, the Soul Main palette is probably one that I would reach for more on an everyday basis. You just have more neutral toned colors here. But if you're looking for a little bit more variety and you like to play with color and texture and dimension, then I would definitely recommend the Alva palette. I just feel like you can get so much out of this palette. As far as the blushes go, there's two that I really enjoy. My favorite everyday neutral blush is Little Jasmine. Just make sure you use this with a light hand, but it is so pretty. But if you like these brighter pink blushes like myself, then Ripe Papaya is the way to go. For me, this is kind of my favorite blush because I love a nice bright pink cheek. So this is incredible. And I definitely think you need to look into these matte lip stains. They are amazing. Normally I'm a big glossy girl and these cream lip stains are amazing. But because of the mask wearing thing, I definitely recommend you look into the matte lip stains. So like I said, Ripe Papaya is what I'm wearing. I also think Perfect Plum is a very nice kind of more wearable color. It doesn't look that way. It looks a little bit more intimidating, but once you blend it out, it actually feels quite wearable. And then if you're looking for something a little bit brighter, Sweet Peach is really fun. But honestly, you can't go wrong with any of these colors. It just depends on your preferences. So that is all I have for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much, Odin's Eye, for just being so amazingly easy to work with and letting me speak my truth. <laughs> so I fully support this brand, highly recommend their products, and I really don't think you would be disappointed. So that is all I have for today's video. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would really appreciate it if you would consider taking the time to do so. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys. Have a good one.